Dragon Ball Super episode 61 was just amazing, surpassed my expectations and without a doubt deserves a spot in the top 5 best episodes of DBS. Overall, I'm rating this episode 9 out of 10. There's a very specific thing that I didn't like about this episode that I'll explain later. But other than that, it was just a top notch episode and had all kinds of materials. It revealed a lot of new information, we finally got a proper explanation behind the mystery of Goku Black and Zamasu. Then we had a 5 star transformation, Goku was serious once again, the animation quality was amazing and it ended with building a lot of anticipation for the next episode. Taking everything in consideration, this is one episode you must watch. I will analyze this episode in details, but before that, let's take a look at the top 5 WTF of this episode. Number 5, they destroyed the Super Dragon Balls. This was a rather surprising information. Even though using the time ring, they would get infinite wishes from the Super Dragon Balls. After switching bodies with Goku and gaining immortality, they felt they got everything they ever wanted. Even though their ultimate aim and ideology are illogical and wrong, they like to believe otherwise. They think they are working for the greater good and after gaining abilities which made them believe is enough to execute the Zero Mortals plan, they destroyed the Super Dragon Balls further displaying just how much in their perfect world dream. I don't know what this means, whether the Super Dragon Balls are destroyed in one or two timelines or if it was wiped from all forms of existence. Also, it would be interesting to see how they recover some of the big damages done by this chaos without the Super Dragon Balls. However, the show is named Dragon Ball and Super Dragon Ball is a thing of DBS. So I believe they will find a way to restore it somehow, maybe with the help of Omni King or by the help of Dragon God Zalama who originally created the Super Dragon Balls. Number 4. Goku Black also killed Goten and Chi Chi. After cornering a helpless Goku, future Zamasu triggers him even more by explaining what they did with his family. Black joins in with a keyblade push through Zamasu to Goku's body. Earlier we knew, using the Super Dragon Balls, Zamasu got hold of Goku's body. But this time, he describes with full details how exactly he did that. This is when we find out Black didn't only kill Goku but his entire family. While Goku was swarming with Goten and Chi Chi, his body suddenly changed to Zamasu's body. Shortly, Zamasu appeared in Goku's body and killed them all. This was truly extra cruel and surprising because we all guessed Goku had to be killed. But we didn't see that other thing coming. Number 3. Goku got serious. After knowing what Zamasu did to Chi Chi and Goten, Goku really really got angry and after a long while got that serious face back. We don't see Goku getting emotionally involved in fights that much in Dragon Ball Super so it was extra satisfying to watch. Goku really started hoping Black and Zamasu's ass. I just loved how he treated immortal Zamasu like he is nothing. Especially this scene where he just hits away Goku Black without even turning around. Goku's rage really temporarily made him stronger than Super Saiyan Rose Black. But the real problem here is Black truly wants that. We saw Black and Zamasu strategizing on how they could suck the maximum amount of power out from Goku. Future Zamasu also seemed to be worried what they would do to get stronger if Goku is finished off. So even though Goku went full savage and it was extremely badass, the eventual outcome went in favor of Goku Black, making him even stronger than ever before. I think Goku and company should have made a proper plan before coming to the future. Black comes up with a new and massive Keyblade sword and totally wrecks Goku in style. This entire sequence was amazingly choreographed and had the DBZ vibe which I enjoyed very much. Number 2. They killed all the gods. We know Zamasu believes that the mortals are behind all kinds of chaos and destruction. Therefore, he made Zero Human's plan to annihilate humans from all forms of existence. But in this episode, it was made quite clear that even they are not true to their aim or can't afford to be true to their goal anymore. 
they are not limited to killing the mortals but are now also killing gods. In fact, they killed all the gods of their timeline using their newfound power. This should be big shocking news for DBS fans that follow the anime only. Now, they didn't elaborate how exactly they killed all the gods, but we know in the Dragon Ball Super manga, they're presenting the story in a slightly different way, and informations are revealed to us in different times too, both in the anime and the manga. It has been explained that there's a life connection between the gods of destruction and the Kaioshin. They were actually created in pairs. If one of them dies, the other must die too. Since the gods of creation are way weaker than gods of destruction, Zamasu and Black simply killed them all, which eventually resulted in the death of all gods in the future timeline and probably also in that new timeline. However, this has not yet been explained in details in the anime and might be brought up later sometime soon. Number 1. The Super Rage, Blue Trunks The most epic scene of this episode comes right at the end of it and is without a doubt the most epic transformation. After a long time, we're seeing a Saiyan getting a new transformation directly fueled by anger and emotions. Future Trunks looks totally badass. It has the godly blue aura flaming up with the Super Saiyan classic yellow aura. Trunks looks very buffed up, his hairstyle, eyes and many other things are like the legendary Super Saiyan Broly in terms of looks. His aura over aura was much similar to Goku's Kaioken SSB. Then we have this legendary walk we have seen many times in DBZ. With every step there's like an earthquake. Gosh this was amazing. Remember that walk of Gohan in the movie Bojack Unbound? Pretty similar. Now, we don't exactly know what that transformation is or just how powerful it is, but what form is this? I think we mainly have two options in hand. Option 1. Future Trunks is actually trying to transform into Super Saiyan Blue, but this is an incomplete form and because it still doesn't have control over the God Key, it got mixed up and is buffing up his body. Also, we never actually saw Goku or Vegeta transforming into Super Saiyan Blue for the first time. They trained and learned the form mostly off screen. So, when we see them go Super Saiyan Blue for the first time, they had already mastered the form. So there wasn't much effort put behind it. Option 2 this is a new and exclusive form of Future Trunks. That is, instead of going Super Saiyan Blue, Trunks got his very own transformation. This is much more furious and an act out of anger reaction. That is quite different to calmly controlling the key, the one interesting aspect. I personally am more in favor of option 2 because we already have Goku and Vegeta SSB. Trunks becoming one would make him look strong but it won't add too much new material to the story. So I would rather be happy if Trunks got something different and unique compared to normal SSB, maybe a rage version of it. Besides, if Trunks remains as muscular as shown at the end of this episode, it would be totally badass. Since we kind of miss muscularity and intensity in Super and this transformation seems to have both, this should be how it remains. Also in terms of strength, it is supposed to be stronger than SSB because if SSB was no good against them, what good would this form be if it is weaker? If that was the case, the plot would be extremely illogical. I don't have an exact explanation as to how he got so strong. Maybe it's because the half-blooded Saiyans have higher potential. Trunks have remained active throughout the years. Also, he trained with SSB Vegeta longer than we realized as we see him using the final flash. Something that was not shown being taught on screen. It would be a little bit weird if Trunks got stronger than Goku and Vegeta even momentarily as he didn't even receive training from Whis contrary to them. Anyways, they could establish this transformation as a brand for the half-blooded Saiyans and I want this to be extremely furiously aggressive contrary to the god form. So let's see how they do it. So that was the top 3 WTF of Dragon Ball Super episode 61. Now coming to the interesting part, this is where Black and Zamasu explained how they did it all. 
Now I haven't seen this episode with Sabs yet, so I might make some mistakes. Feel free to correct me. Firstly, Black mainly originated in a time paradoxical way. It is because Goku fought Zamasu he got triggered to become Black. Even though you would think Black was there in the future first, which is why Goku had to examine Zamasu. The thing here is Trunks traveling back to the past creates time distortions. And it is because he brought the news from the future these events happen. It's a bit complex, actually it's quite similar to the time concept we see in DC Universe's Flash series. I'm kind of astonished how Dragon Ball Super decided to go to this level of complexities provided many fans still has a hard time understanding the timelines as explained in the Cell Saga. But I am extremely happy that they are taking the game to the next level and the plot has a lot of depth. The immortal Zamasu that we see in this future timeline is originally from the future timeline or Trunks' timeline. So what about the Zamasu who is currently Goku Black? Well, this Black Zamasu is from the original timeline or the past timeline. Due to repeated time traveling, the original split into multiple branches, probably after the point of Goku fighting Zamasu. That is in a way, 5th timeline was created and this Black Zamasu is from that 5th timeline. Everything above that timeline is the same as DBS timeline except for the recent events. As we see, when Zamasu switched bodies with Goku, the condition and situations were about the same. So even though Beerus destroyed Zamasu in one timeline, it didn't do anything to him due to the time ring. He uninterruptedly killed Gawasu, took the Patara and the time ring from the fifth timeline or the other branch of the original timeline. Then he, using the time ring, skipped time and using the Super Dragon Balls wished to change bodies with Goku. After he was done getting the body and wiping out Goku and his family, he traveled to the future. He reached the timeline of Future Trunks and instantly killed Future Gawasu. The thing about Future Zamasu is, he was never triggered by Goku's ass open, so even though he had hated the mortals, he wasn't pushed to the point of killing Gawasu. But deep in his mind, he always had the desire to execute his plan. So when Black killed Gawasu, he felt bad just for a moment and then realized this is exactly what he wanted. He shook and hugged the past version of himself, realizing that his dream is about to become a reality. This was a really cool moment. Imagine if a past version of you suddenly appeared with enough resources to fulfill a dream you stopped believing was possible to achieve. It was a really emotional moment and I felt really good for Zamasu's. The animation there was just 7 star quality. The black and Zamasu hug were shown from all angles in a 360 style. I'm sure it takes a lot of effort and this highlighted the importance of the scene in an even better way. Also about the animation quality, it was quite good throughout the episode, well it wasn't flawless. If you are that one guy who watches DBS to pause and find animation mistakes, you will get 2 to 3 in this episode. But the thing is, the movements were very smooth much like DBZ, so it was quite enjoyable and then there were some top notch scenes like the Goku Zamasu hug or the summoning of Super Shenron. And lastly I want to mention that one thing I didn't like about this episode and overall about the entire series, that is they don't want to show any form of true violence or blood. I just don't understand why they're doing this, DBZ was never like this and the majority of the audiences are adult or 16 plus at least. I mean come on, no blood? Seriously? I will pay to see Black brutally killing Gigi and Goden, but leave that alone, they rarely even show blood during the battles. Will there be some kind of uncensored version or something? Because I don't know much about this and certainly don't see the point behind them trying to make it an under 10 show. Well that's about all for episode 61, however if you guys are extremely excited and just can't wait to know what might happen next, there's something you can check out. We got major spoilers up to Dragon Ball Super episode 65, it will give you a clear idea of what to expect next. Make sure you check it out, link is attached in the description as well as in the comment section. For every single Dragon Ball updates, fun posts, 
fantasy death battle, exclusive videos and much more. Make sure you like and follow us on our Facebook page Dragon Ball Fans. Link can be found in the description. Bless the comment section with your opinion down below. See you in the next video.